I love a lot of things about Malaysia. I love the food. When it comes to food, I know the best part is if you wake up in the morning, you feel like having Chinese is there, you feel like having Indian is there, you feel like having some Malay food is there. But ultimately, it's the nasi kanda, dude. You cannot go wrong with that. I want to say the food, but then it make me look very insensitive. So the food is second. The first thing I love about Malaysia is actually the people. People are cool. Besides the food and lots of public holidays. A lot, a lot of public holidays. Um, I have to say that we are blessed with with a lot of natural resources and um, we are a country that is free from natural disasters. Well, I think uh, the, the thing I really love most about Malaysia is the fact that we are so diverse. You know, I think um, it's, it's a benefit for us to, uh, to be able to live in the same road where there are all kinds of races, all kinds of people and all that. Our diversity is definitely our greatest strength and, and I love it. Lah. I think the best thing to love about Malaysia is the food and the people, but the people come first. Yeah, without people, Malaysia is nothing. Uh, we've had people in Malaysia from a long time ago, from different cultures. Uh, Malaysia is right at the tail end of Asia. So you have all kinds of cultures here, and uh, we've become Malaysian. We are no longer uh, Malay, Chinese, Indian. Uh, we've become Malaysian, and, and therefore our food has become Malaysian. You can't say that anything is just from a distinct culture, uh, it's always got a mix of something from another culture. The food, the culture, I am a mix of four biggest populations in Malaysia. Malaysian, Indian, Chinese and Indonesian. So from there I can see a melting pot of cultures, melting pot of food that I enjoy. And I also like the people. The people. Growing up in Malaysia is amazing. Um, you know. It, it was all about friends, it was all about family, it, it, it was all about festive seasons. Uh, you cannot wait to go to somebody's house and, and eat their food. Uh, you know, whether it's Hari Raya, Deepavali, Chinese New Year, Christmas, there's always somebody in your house or you're always in somebody's house. I grew up in a middle class neighborhood in Subang Jaya. It's very mixed. I had uh, some Chinese neighbors and the grandmother was always there. So whenever the kids were playing, right, she would make chrysanthemum tea. And she wouldn't like, not when a packet, no bro. This is like, she would make, you know, like use chrysanthemum and use uh, rock sugar and make and give to all the kids to drink. Not many countries out there that have so many different and diverse culture like us. So growing up, I've, I've had a lot of friends from different races, different backgrounds, and we all live happily. I mean, in, uh, in harmony, but I think a lot of things have, have changed now. My father was, was from the police force. So I actually grew up uh, among a lot of Malays. You know, we lived, actually we lived in uh, uh, what we used to call police depot those days, currently known as Pulapol. So my house was inside there. And uh, we had about like, I think 90% of my friends, uh, my neighbors and my friends, the people I go to school with were, were Malays. Uh, there were obviously a few other Chinese people and all that there, uh, that, I, that, that, that we knew, uh, but I grew up among the Malays. But I didn't realise that I was different from the others because as far as at that time, we were all like Malaysians. I did not feel uh, at any point did I feel excluded. I went to their houses, we ate together. They came to my house, we ate together, uh, we went to school together and near where we lived, there were a few Chinese villages, hot spring and, and, and all that. And so our school was also very diverse. I grew up in a neighborhood where we had Malays, we had Chinese, we had Indians, we had Punjabis, we had Saranis. I went to a school where uh, no one particular uh, community was dominant. Uh, so I, I had a very mixed upbringing. Um, my dad's Indian Muslim, my mom is Chinese, so I ate uh, nasi lemak in the morning, uh, kway teow goreng and tose or itli in the morning. I grew up in a 90% Malay majority area. Uh, I grew up in Shah Lam. Um, people at that time were friendlier. I mean, you had kids going around playing with other neighbors' kids. You had a mixture at that time. Going to people's houses and, and sitting down and having a good time, yeah, sure, if you're in a bunch of, uh, you know, you, you got a bunch of close friends, that obviously happens. But try going to somebody you just met, somebody's house that you just met. Uh, it's become very difficult nowadays. You know, when your friend has a girlfriend, simple things like, hey, what's her name? These days, I hear it all the time. Instead of asking what her name is, first thing you ask her, hey, 
So what? Indian, ah? Chinese, ah? come on, ah, Malay, ah? Tell, ah, tell, ah. it's like, what? What is that got to do with anything, right? People have gotten more sensitive, right? Uh, last time, a bigger percentage of the population used to be more chilled out, used to be cool with everything. And now uh, 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 that percentage has gotten less and there's more people who, are, who have become more sensitive. Uh. Now that is all right, but the problem is when people are, people, the difference between sensitive people and people who are cool, the people who are sensitive tend to, to voice out their sensitivities more. You know, and the people who are cool, when they're just cool, they're just cool. Lah, you know, like, okay. Kau buat hal kau, aku buat hal aku. I'll be alright. What we notice now is there's a lot of racial tension going on. A lot of hate slogans, lies. And it's all over the internet. And it's not very healthy for our country. Compartmentalization. You know, we've just uh, become a, a country where everything is compartmentalized. Uh, if you look at the economy, and there's always, always interest groups. I want to do this, and you know, you got to, uh, you got to support us, and you got to give us projects because we belong to this particular race. And I'm not just speaking about the, the Malays. Huh? Uh, I feel sad when we when we have organisations says we represent the Indians or we represent the Chinese. For me, if you want to fight for anything, you should be fighting like we represent the Malays. Uh, sorry, the Malaysians. We represent the underprivileged Malaysians, you know, or we represent rural Malaysians, that's fine, you know, but so we've become very compartmentalized. The biggest difference is really trust. When I was young, I think everybody trusted each other. Yeah, you, uh, as a kid, I could cycle five, ten miles out of the house, I could play football in the evening, I'd come back unmolested. Uh, these days, nobody trusts anybody. Uh, no parents would trust their kids out alone in the evening or with anyone. Yeah, we have reach a situation in our country where we don't even know our neighbours. So therefore, we don't talk to them, we don't engender trust. Unlike when we were kids, when everybody knew everybody, because nobody shifted around, nobody moved around, everybody stayed there for years. Now it's, it's different. Now, you really, everybody's a stranger to you, because nobody wants to make the first step to say, hello, how are you, I'm so-and-so. The Malays hang out with the Malays, the Indians hang out with the Indians, the Chinese hang out with the Chinese, and then there's also some suspicion when they talk amongst each other because you don't know what's being said. I think it's people. Basically, it's people, their mindsets. Uh, there are people out there who don't want to share with others. So when they don't want to share with others and they, they want to keep it for themselves, they go around telling people that this only belongs to us and that belongs to them and this belongs... And that what's, that's what separates everybody. And slowly, slowly enough, you don't even realize it, but you start buying into it. And then you become just like everybody else. It became slightly more permissible for people to voice their sensitivities, right? And it became a whole lot easier with the internet and social media. It became a whole lot easier for people to voice their opinions. Two, I, th I think some of these sensitivities actually arise um, from, you know, low self-esteem and insecurities. Uh. The media, especially social media, Facebook, number one, because anyone can just post whatever they like. I mean, I respect freedom of speech, but I think some people, they should really filter out the things that they want to post. Um, some of us are quite, I mean, not all, but some people out there, they are quite gullible. So they will just believe whatever they see or they read on Facebook. And some might not be true. So you have to do your own research. Some time ago, People decided that uh, there was not enough to go around. And that's not true. I think Malaysia, we are a blessed, blessed country. We have enough to go around. We would have been, all of us would have been very rich. We would have been very wealthy. Not just in the materials, materialistic sense, but we would have been very, very well to do in every sense of the word. Because uh, when we became independent, we were not like many other countries. We had all the infrastructure. And by the 70s, we had even found oil. Uh, we had... Uh, a good economy back then and there would have been enough to go around but somewhere along the line for whatever interest and and i think it's the easiest people to put pin the blame on are all these politicians and uh, they definitely had a role to play on this and what happened was uh, they sort of decided that there's not enough to go around and they need to fight and they need to uh, gain at the expense of others so all these policies that we see today are generally meant uh, to benefit certain people certain races and certain classes and that's the reason why 
the ordinary people are being pushed into uh, nice little compartments. We grew up in, in silos. Uh, we, we have uh, political parties that decide to champion things along racial lines. We had our own people, our own community championing things according, according to racial lines. We stopped thinking as Malaysians. You know, the great dream that Tunku Abraman had in 1963 in, in forming Malaysia between uh, Malaya, Sabah and Sarawak, and, and for a while Singapore was lost. Everybody just hung out with their own community, their own race. And so it was a race among the races rather than a joint uh, tag team or relay race among all races together towards a certain point of life. It started off with education, okay? At that time, there was segregated education. You had the vocational schools, you had the Sekolah Kebangsaan Jenis, SKJ, SJKs. So what happened was national schools started dropping in standards, probably because the teachers who initially felt that teaching was a profession of integrity are no longer in the schools. Now what we have is a generation of teachers who take it as a last resort. I think we got to go back in time and take a look and watch some of Jin Samsudin movies. Because that movie showed how liberal everything was, at the same time respecting everybody's uh, ethnic background and things like that. If you watch that movie, there was always different races, different people coming together in the same movie and nobody had nobody had even thought of it while watching that movie. Oh, the Indian flea is a bad guy. Oh, the Chinese flea is the gangster. Oh, the hero is this flea. You know what I mean? It was just a great movie that we enjoyed. Now, when you put something like that, first thing you do is that. You try and analyze it so much until you, you, you probably don't even enjoy the movie anymore. Look, we are all in this boat called Malaysia together, right? So, you got to decide where you want this boat to go, right? So, if you want it to go left, you know, you paddle like you want to go left. Lah. If you want to see a better Malaysia, and that depends on what you think a better Malaysia is. I might not agree with it, but, you know, you should, and you think Malaysia tomorrow can be better than a Malaysia today, by your definition, then you should put in effort to make sure that happens. Lah. As Malaysian, we should never blame the government all the time for what has happened. Not all the governments in the world, they are, they are not perfect. And, and I think that being a true Malaysian, we, ha we should fight for the rights of others and not just for ourselves. So we just can't be standing there and expect you know, the, plan to, the plan to just blossom. We have to do something. Right now, we are at the time of our, the stage of our growth or the country's history where we are at a, really at a crossroads. The part that I would like Malaysia to head into is look back and see that people could live together as one and, uh, lit and, and there was no need to fight. There's no need to fight that we could actually be progress as a nation. Uh, if we were to go back and look at some of the policies and, and maybe uh, help to uh, see how we could streamline some of them, make sure that uh, we uh, have programs that benefit everybody, I firmly believe uh, that we will become a very prosperous nation, a very united nation. Uh, we always turn around and look and say, hey, look, look what Singapore has done and this and all that. But I, and I, I personally think if we have our policies right, today we, we would have been far ahead of Singapore in many ways. And we can still do it if we were to just make sure that we don't look at our own race. Because for me, as far as I'm concerned, they're all Malaysians and I have very good friends. Uh, they may come from various ethnic backgrounds, but none of them look at me as a Punjabi or an Indian and I, and I don't look upon them at whatever race they come to. We just need to grow larger number, one. And two, we really need to become a bit more vocal. We need to stand up and say, this is not the Malaysia that we want. This is not, the, what, the, the, this is not what we signed up for when we became independent. We need to move forward as one nation and we need to say enough. Those of you uh, who are doing this for your own purposes, you don't speak for us. You, you know, it's up to Malaysians now to think as Malaysians first. You can't outsource this idea of unity to a government, to a government department, to a community leader. 
Malaysians on their own must make this outreach among each other uh, to be Malaysians. Uh, to, 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 for example, throw a Merdeka party, come together as Malaysians, throw a Malaysia Day party. Uh, no one does that anymore. Everybody depends on the government to do something or a political party or an association. Nobody says, let's get together and do it on our own. We have become lazy. We have become dependent on somebody else. We, we, we can do this on our own. We have to look back at the idea that everything starts through integration at a young age. That's most important. Do you want them to grow up the same case as what's going on now? Or do you want to change it? If you want to change it, how do you change it? Do you push for policies encouraging more national schools and increasing the standards in national schools and also increasing the standard in education so that more people have faith in national schools. It all starts with that. Because the thing that most people don't realize is most of the kids, the interaction with others, come from schools. So that is where, if you want to talk about unity, if you want to talk about social integration and cohesion, that is where it must start. Keep it simple, enjoy yourselves, you know, meet anybody and everybody from all walks of life. It does not matter where they come from. In fact, if they come from a different background, great, learn about their background. It gives you knowledge. It tells you about what other people do and what they can do and can't do. And so you know and they know. And everybody is, uh, you know, becomes a much, it becomes a much happier nation as opposed to keeping it to yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, because there was an article I read. Uh, I really cannot remember who wrote this, but he says, one fine day, it'll become a brown world. That means everybody will be mixed with everything. And there's, there's just, just basically one colour and there's nothing to shout about anymore. You know, you cannot say this, you can't say that because everybody looks the same. As cliche as it may sound, I think uh, the advice is do unto others what you want done to you. I think we should not hate on others. Especially like so much of racial tensions has been happening right now. I think we should all be compassionate toward, toward each other. We shouldn't judge and we should live like the old times. No, but satu kita tego bercerai kita robo kan? I think yeah, yeah. I think we all should stand united. Consciously, uh, make friends of without looking at uh, um, at at their own kind. That's one. Move out from their comfort zones. Uh, young people, I believe, should move around. We should make friends of all kinds. And you be uh, if you were to if everybody if all the young people were to start doing that, it would be very hard for the the, the leaders then to, to decide to use campaigns designed to make, to pit races against each other for their own gains. Because everybody's going to say, hey, if, I were, if you set this policy, my friends are going to be affected. I don't want that. So I think making friends is extremely important and travel. And young people, not, don't just read Facebook. Read. Read lots of books. To grow up, really, get mature and, and enjoy being a Malaysian and making friends among each other, not talking about uh, how things should be. You, you won't know how things should be unless you, you go through life. For the Malay younger generation, affirmative action, affirmative action is not a reason for you to slack. Same goes for when you're in the corporate world, just because you got a place in the GLT and you're Malay doesn't give you an entitlement. To the Chinese, seriously, start mingling to the Malays also seriously start mingling both of you can help each other okay to the Indians I know you you all can always mingle with the Malays you can all always mingle with the Chinese but somehow if the Indian younger generation is listening to this they should be the catalyst to bring the two together hey what's up it's Fred Fabes and you know I want to wish all my brothers and sisters out there a Slama Hari Merdeka it simply means all of you Okay, 57 years old today, we were born in 1957. Make the most out of this country, enjoy it, love it, and live it. Peace out. My name is Ultimate, and I would like to take this opportunity to wish all my friends, who also happen to be my brothers and sisters, who live and are Malaysians, a very happy Merdeka, and thank you for believing in Malaysia. Peace. Hi everyone, my name is Lee Yvonne, and I'd like to wish everyone a Selamat Hari Merdeka. Hi, I'm Kashminder Singh, a member of the human race who's uh, delighted to have been born in Malaysia. I'm proud to be a Malaysian uh, and uh, I want to wish all my fellow Malaysians a lovely Hari Merdeka. Hi, I'm Hafiz Baharam. I would like to wish all Malaysians Selamat Hari Merdeka and to our Sabah and Sarawakian friends Selamat Hari Malaysia. Merdeka! 